Hi guys, I'm Heath Manning from Manning Cues. This video is going to be on kick shots, part three, advanced kick shots, where I'm going to show you how to kick at a object ball on an end rail and a cue ball also with an end rail value. In order to give the cue ball a value, we need to find the track line to the corner pocket in the direction we're kicking. So we know that we're kicking the cue ball off this rail in this direction, so this is my 0. This is my 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, and 80. When we come around a 90 degree corner on the table, we no longer go up by increments of 10. We go up by increments of 20. So this is 70, this is 80. This is 100, 120, and 140. Between them is 90, 110, 130, and 150. So I'm going to find a track line close to my cue ball. And I can see that a track line close to my cue ball is 100 to 50. I'm very close. If I go up to 102 and I go to 51, now I'm right over my cue ball. So if I shoot that shot, I'm to believe that my cue ball should go down and into the corner pocket. So I've accurately given my cue ball a value. So I'm going to put myself back on the line, okay, from 51 to um, 102, okay, there we are. Now, we've given the cue ball a value of 102. Now, let's give the object ball a value. We know that we're going to be kicking off the rail somewhere in the middle. Okay, so put your cue in the middle and bring it over down the angle. Come back at the cue ball on the angle, at the object ball, imagining that the cue ball is going to come this way, and have your butt stick through the rail. Now, in line with these diamonds, okay, you can put your finger over your cue and give it a value, right where my finger is. Now, if I were to give this a value, how do I know what value these diamonds are? Well, just like in part two of this series, if your cue ball value is over 40, if it's 41 and over, these values down here are negative 10, 20, and 30. So this is negative 10, this is negative 9, my finger would be negative 8. So that is my starting value that I've determined for my object ball. It may not be the official value, but that's where I'm starting to determine what it is. So if I take 8 off of 102, that gives me 94. So if I aim my cue ball, if I take 94 and divide that by 2, um, that's going to be 94, this is 47. So if I aim my cue at 47 with my cue over my cue ball, aim at 47, and pivot over to 8, leaving my tip where my cue ball would contact. Here is 8. So point my cue right at 8. I'm actually coming right at the ball. If I wanted to get risky and try to make the ball off the kick, I would have to give the cue ball a value back on this direction beside the object ball and maybe give it a value of 10 or 11. But you're better off to hit the ball than try to make it and foul until you get a really consistent stroke where you know that you're going to place the cue ball where you want, you're better off to aim at the ball directly in the center because that gives you a little bit of variance on each side. So I'm going to give that a value of 8 so everything is good here. So I'm in fact going to aim that cue ball at 47 and come down and hit my object ball. So I get in position and here we go. I am two tips above center a very slight amount of English between zero and a quarter of a tip and to stroke the shot. And even though I aimed at the center of the ball, it shows you that my stroke was off slightly and that my cue ball went left of my target. Yes, I got lucky, but that's part of the pool. On a good day, you're going to make the ball. On a bad day, you're still going to hit the ball. That just happened to be a good day shot, but I didn't foul, and I'm still shooting. I would still call that ball in the pocket. Always call the ball, because you never know. It might happen. So now I'm up the table, and now I can continue my run out. 
But if I just, you know, called a hit and made it, I'd be upset with myself. So call the ball. Now, that was how to hit a optic ball on an end rail from a cue ball on an end rail. To recap, the formula is the cue ball value. Now this is a positive number. Here's my zero. So I'm counting up in positive numbers to 80. When I come around the corner, we jump by 20s. Okay, my cue ball had a positive value and my optic ball has a negative value because we come back to zero and come into the negative rail. Know that these values when you're kicking from the end rail are negative 10, 20, and 30 because the cue ball value is over 41 and up. Okay, so we subtract the negative value of the optic ball from the positive value of the cue ball. Divide that total by two and that's going to give you your short rail contact with a very little amount of English. Your table may require more, but you'll have to experiment with that. And remember, when you're giving your object ball a value, you have to give it a value on the angle the cue ball is going to come from through the object ball to the rail inside where the inlays are. So if you can draw a line from diamond to diamond to diamond and then under your cue, that's where we give it a value not in front of the diamond. And the same goes for the cue ball. You give the cue ball a value of a track line okay, to the corner pocket, but that's in the direction you're kicking. I can't give that a value this way and say, you know, that that's going to be 106, okay, because here's 110. I can't give it a value that way. I have to give it a value through the ball in the direction that I'm shooting it. If you do this right, it will work and you will be very happy with the results. If you like the video, please click the like button, send me a comment if you have any questions, and uh, please keep supporting me at manincuse.com. Thank you guys.